Watch till the end of this video to find out how you can win a tiny house with Omaze. New Zealand is home to some truly wild and rugged landscapes, but building in a place like this is anything but simple. I mean, right now we're miles away from any services, and that is exactly why this next inspiring couple we're about to meet decided to make their home in an off-the-grid shipping container. Hi Delia, how's it going? Hi Bryce, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. G'day Brent, how's it going mate? Good Bryce, good to see you. Welcome to the wilderness. It certainly is an incredibly wild spot that you have here, isn't it? It is indeed, yes, it's quite a treat to get here. It yeah. is, and just these views are absolutely amazing. How on earth did you find this place? Wow, um, did a lot of um, dirt bike riding and this was one of the places that we came through. So yeah, it's spectacular. We viewed it from one of those windmills over there and um, later talked to the people and found out who owned it. And we'd actually come across it independently. I'd heard about it through some of the tiny house conversations that I'd had with people and when we sat down and looked at a map we realised that we were talking about the same location. So. Yeah, we feel very lucky to have found a spot like this mm. and um, yeah, it's invigorating and it's a completely different environment to where we work in town, so it's nice having the uh, contrast to that. Yeah, because yeah, it's hard to believe that where we are right now is only about 20 minutes away from downtown Wellington, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and we were living in an apartment before this, so... Mm. Yeah, I sort of miss the life of being able to step out onto, you know, <laughs> Cuba Street, but... Uh, I mean, this is just so worthwhile. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, mate. I'd yeah. much rather be stepping out <laughs> onto this. Yeah. So you've built here a shipping container home. Can you tell me a little bit about why you chose to build a shipping container? Well, it's Delia, really. I blame her. <laughs> <laughs> she was a tiny house person from way back, and she persuaded me. And I like it because you can transport it to a place like this and plonk it and be living here, you know, in two days, basically. There's a bit of site prep. Uh, we put down railway sleepers and we actually put railway iron in the ground. There's a story here of a 40-foot container being flipped down the hill by a gust, 200 kilometre an hour gust. No way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that was a bit scary. I bet it was. <laughs> well, it's good to know that you're on solid foundations here now then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of the deciding factors that I liked about the idea was downsizing was just having a smaller ecological footprint on the planet, really. Um, yeah, and I've also got a conservation background, so I've spent quite a lot of time in huts, and I've always, it's always been a dream to think I'd love to have a really upmarket hut that I can put in a stunning place, which you do for many of the conservation projects that you work on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic to have a partner that wants to do these things, that, you know, doesn't want the five-star accommodation. To me, this is five-star, right? And so what drove me really was uh, living New Zealand, um, enjoying what we have, and to me that's out-of-the-way places like here. And so your home here is made from a 40-foot container with a little 10-foot container added on? Yeah, that was to get the bedroom. We didn't want to go to the mezzanine and you can't get a bedroom really in a 40 foot for us and have that homely space. Yeah. And with the container here, I really like what you've done with the entranceway and it's great how you've got the sink outside as well. Yeah, that's my uh, fish scaling sink. So that's been brilliant. You can turn around, fill buckets of water up and all that kind of jazz. So I, that's been a great idea. And one of the things that I noticed about the outside of the container is you've got all of the shutters everywhere, so you can just completely close the house up when you want to. Yeah. That was the main thing with storage or going on the, on the road. We can shutter it up. No one would know what's inside. Yeah. And if we ever had a fire here, the decks and everything lift up like drawbridges. Right. And uh, we can shutter it all up, so we can pretty well seal it and it should be fairly safe in those situations. Now obviously in this location there are no services to connect to so I'm guessing you're totally off the grid in this container. Totally yeah. man, there's, there's nothing for miles. 
So yeah, we have to uh, truck our own water in. We decided not to catch water because of the conditions, right. the wind, and of course, containers, it's hard to put guttering on. You've, sure. You've got to add a roof. And then I see you've got a good sized solar system here. Oh yeah, the solar system, the architect we talked about for uh, ages, and he brought in the experts, uh, sold us on the lithium side. So we've got a, like a 13 uh, kilowatt lithium battery, which is two golf cart batteries, right. and a super system to control it all. Um, and we've got SMA inverters, which are German, uh, one that does our AC, so our whole house is 240 volts. Right. And then we've got 12 uh, solar panels of 330 watts, and uh, I've had just about near generation here in the middle of winter. Wow. So I'm very impressed. Well, this location is just absolutely incredible. The shipping container looks amazing from the outside and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Shall we take a look? Yeah, come on in. Thank you very much, after right. you. Oh, this is lovely. And it's really unique the way that you've done this, that you immediately enter into the bathroom space. Can you talk to me about this? Yeah, um, we put a bit of thought into this. This is, I think, about a two metre by two metre area. I love the feel of the wood on the feet. You know, it reminds you of the old baths and everything that you change in, so you get a bit of that. Plus, it's another chance for the dirt to get off your feet before you enter in the house, going through. And underneath is a big stainless steel tray, so you can just take the wood out and wash it all down again every once in a while. Yeah, so a bit of thought, and we've put the uh, vanity there, as you can see, and Delia picked the mirror here, so it's one of her features. But yeah, it's I, got I, two different light settings, which is quite cool. Um. Oh, very nice. <laughs> and it's nice to have the reflection. We purposely did the window there, so you get the reflection of outside coming through, and all that reflection you know, makes those smaller places look um, bigger, which is yeah, kind of part of the purpose, really. And um, the shower's amazing as well. The shower does look really nice, and I love what you've done here with the glass feature. Yeah, that was. we've got a couple of features unique to ourselves, and this is a particular one of mine I'm quite a bird lover, and this was a painting that we came across by Ben Timmons over in Takaka, and so we got him to send the digital form, and it's, um, yeah, the white here and all the kotuku. So, we, yeah, we wanted to have that feature, and, um, yeah, it's something really special and unique that you can do, the fact that you're um, designing it yourself, so you get to do all these little idiosyncrasies that just personalise it here. Yeah, so that's um, one of my ones. I was a bit freaked out with Delia's use of clear glass <laughs> over the toilet. I, I wanted the traditional smoky glass, but uh, she taught me into that. And, of course, you don't have to worry here because there's no one around. Of yeah. course, yeah. yeah. Apart and from the occasional goat who mm. might look in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got some blinds installed too for when we are visitors. So Great. Yeah. yeah, that's working out really well. And our composting toilet, which we uh, mentioned briefly before, and we chose this um, Simpaloo model. And um, like the look of it, that it still looked, it was you know kind of like porcelain or all white, which fitted in with the decor of the bathroom. And then through here, we've got your kitchen. Ah, we have. I see you've got lots of storage built in here. Yeah, no, well, a lot of it's quite invisible, which we like the idea of, and just keeping it, you know, that clean look, which again helps with having very little clutter in a small space. So we've got our pantry over here. Right. Which holds everything that you need pretty well much. Um, and we've just got drawers for cutlery and a little bit of an overflow of pantry in here. And they all got that nice soft, you know, closing and they just close by themselves. And down here we've just got some harakiki baskets that we use to store um, other items. Like we've got our toaster down there and we can just easily slip that down and put that on the bench daily when we're using that for our toast. And um, yeah, you get used to operating that way and it just becomes second nature after a while. Yeah, absolutely. And I see that you've got all full size appliances here. Yes, apart from the dishwasher, which is a half size, and that's great for the two of us. Mm, right. That's all you need. Yeah. And then it's great to see you have lots of prep space here in the kitchen. 
Yeah, we, so it's always a good idea we find to have a bit of space in between your cooker and your sink as well. And um, we've got gas hobs, but initially we thought we might not actually worry about having an oven and possibly use a barbecue, which we'd been doing a bit at the apartment. But we found it's been really invaluable, particularly in a you know lovely wilderness environment like this that doesn't always cater to cooking out in a barbecue, so that's worked out particularly well. Also in our kitchen here we've got a pull-out table which is really useful for also creating an L shape which is useful in a kitchen yeah. um, plus it comes right out into an actual table where you can have you know at least four sitting there if you want to have a small dinner party um, and it just helps to keep the space with the narrowness of the container that you have when you can push you know things like that away. Mm. So, it certainly does yeah. Yeah, it's a clever yeah. way of doing it and it definitely neatly tucks away in there doesn't it? Mm, yeah it just looks like a drawer. Yeah, yeah. And I really like what you've done up here by having this sort of bulkhead style storage and then the light feature running across. Yeah, so this is like an airline sort of bulkhead and they're just great. I mean, you can put lots in there, so dearly has got a bit of storage up there. We're particularly happy with that. Yeah, I think we? particularly in a high cube container you can use that headspace quite well. And then of course over here, it's incredible the way you've got this big bifold door that just opens mm. out onto this marvellous vista. Oh yeah, um, we did want the bifold doors just to give us that whole fold back and open that space out onto the deck. And we've had the uh, couch out on the deck a few times with a few beers engines, so that's worked out really well on those just absolute calm days. I bet. One of the, um, well, there's a funny story with Delia in the um, French doors down the bottom here, in that she purposely made them different sizes. So she had uninterrupted views, right? So that is a larger door on the left, and she gets can look out from the bed and see the views. Nice, well thought <laughs> out. Yeah, well thought nice. out. Yeah. See what it, they give up. Yeah. <laughs> and Always the martyr. Yeah, there's plenty of other windows you can look out for. <laughs> and then over here, a really cosy looking lounge space. You've got a comfy couch and the fire and the nice armchair there and everything. Yeah, it does. It helps to differentiate it. Initially we thought we might need to custom build our couch um, area but we already had a two-seater couch back at the apartment which fitted perfectly well, added some lovely colour to it, plus also it meant that we could fit in Brent's favourite chair, you know it's nice to be really comfortable next to the fire and um, it just creates a nice cosy space around the gorgeous little sparky fireplace which we um, think is fantastic. We do a bit of cooking on the top, always have a cup of tea kettle there. Nice. Yeah, and uh, I often uh, do bacon and eggs on. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. That was an essential on the list, was <laughs> to have a log burner. Yeah, yeah, that heat that warms you right through. And then the heat shield that you have here behind the fire, is that the shipping container number that you've written onto it? Yeah, that's the shipping container. That's something I wanted. Uh, and with all the laser cutting you can do these days, uh, the number was easy. Mm. Yeah. I really like that. And then what is going on here with the television and this contraption that you've got on the roof? <laughs> Again, another major life's decisions, you know. <laughs> Downsizing oh, the TV size. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, of course I wanted that big 65 and we ended up with a 42. We actually wanted a TV that we could watch in bed or we could put this way. One of the things you can do is just turn the TV around in this way, so if the person doesn't want to watch it there, you can put your headphones on here and watch the TV. Right. And so this rail gives you that option of moving it everywhere, and then it can turn a full 360. Very clever. And then behind us here, we've got your bedroom, and this is a really lovely space. Now this has all been constructed in that 10-foot shipping container edition, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right. So this is essentially the join of a cutout in the 40 foot and then we've connected the 10 footer there. And we find that, well, once again, it works really well. Um, initially, you did kind of notice shuffling down the side, but essentially you really only come here to sleep. So you, you just get used to that after a while. Um, and we've got extra storage up in these cupboards up here. Little cubby hole drawers here, which are just really useful for anything that you your headphones or anything that you want easy access to. And then what's happening over here? 
Um, well, this is often where people think that the container ends, but it's right. actually um, the essential wardrobe. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. So we've managed to have a his and a hers, and it was always been a bit of a, a laughing, talking topic um, in particular with my friends because I, I quite enjoy my clothes and my fashion and it was always a bit of a joke. How you'd manage to downsize to the degree that you can actually have a tiny house and still have quite a few um, items of clothing. Um, yeah and we've got these drawers here which are lovely and deep and once again they're the self clothes which works well and we purposely left some gap up here just for some of those everyday things like you know your handbag or Brent's motorbike gears up there um, yeah and it works really well and I've got the two racks here so you can kind of fit double in and can easily put your jewellery in here and your yoga mat here so there's all those little kind of posies that you find that works for everyday life and obviously you can close it up and you don't really know it's there and another essential feature that, that I was keen to have was one of these cool mirrors um, which also pivots around and um, you can get the right light for when you're dressing yourself. Yeah and again it adds another reflection which is you know again good for those tiny spaces so yeah we're really pleased with how that worked out it's um, yeah exceeded our expectations and it's nice that you can just close it up completely and um, yeah, you don't really know that it's there actually. So. That is all really clever. Yeah. And to be totally honest, a ridiculous sized wardrobe for a tiny house. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but that is really impressive. And I'm yeah. so glad that you did build this in because it's so important to prioritise things in small spaces which mm. are important to you. And mm. you can see immediately how that's really added to the space for mm. you. Yeah, no, we're, we're particularly happy with that. Or I am anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's starting to encroach on my side. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been living in the shipping container now? We moved in, I think, late December, early January. And um, we particularly got to know it really well through being here in the COVID lockdown. So that yeah. whole of really living mm. and working in a space, you, um, you got to really understand the features and the functionality. And I think we've become particularly happy with it from being in it in that time, yeah. And this is really home now. You know, we've made it our home and it's, mm. it, it, you know, and we have spent a bit of money on it, there's no... No question. Mm -hmm. For us, it wasn't a cheap thing to do. You know, um, it's a lifestyle choice for us. Yeah. To that end, what was the cost that was involved in constructing the container and the solar and all that went with it? Well, yeah, that was uh, about 350000 So it is quite expensive. And you can definitely see where the money has been spent as well. Right. You've got really high quality fittings right throughout the home, all really nice high quality double glazed joinery and 350,000 while in tiny house world that might seem like a lot of money. For what you've actually created here, this is a phenomenal result, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you don't need a lot of everything, so you don't mind paying a bit more money to get really nice things like, even with the birch ply, you know, it's just that much lighter and, and sleeker and, and just more comfortable environment to be surrounded in. We feel really positive now, but we've spent the money to get there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and the ongoing mm. lower living costs, you know, make up for it, especially when, you know, if you head into semi-retirement or retirements. Mm. Being able to lower those can, you know, really determine your lifestyle to some degree. Yeah. When you choose to finish with. Yeah, we don't. We def hopefully, we'll never have power costs, you know, for another twenty years. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Well, I think this home is really something special. The house itself is amazingly beautiful, mm. but then you add to it this <laughs> yeah. unbelievable place that you've found to put it, and it mm. really is an incredible place for you both mm. to call home. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks, yeah. Bryce. Thank you. This environment here is so wild and so invigorating. Being here really makes you feel alive. And then a house like this really makes you feel at home. This place really is something very special and there is no question about it that Delia and Brent are setting themselves up for an incredible retirement in this place.
thanks to Amaze for sponsoring this video and helping to make what we do possible. If you've ever dreamt of designing and building your very own tiny house, then this could be your chance. Thanks to Amaze, you've got the opportunity to win a tiny house to the value of $100,000 built by Modern Tiny Living, plus taxes are included. The house is fully customizable, which means you really do get to build the tiny house of your dreams. And no doubt, if you've been watching the show for a while, you will have no shortage of ideas. Best of all is that every donation helps to support PATH. PATH are a wonderful organization who are working tirelessly to help end homelessness. And right now their work is needed more than ever. They are right there on the front lines, helping to protect America's most vulnerable people. So for your chance to win the tiny house of your dreams and to support a truly great cause, go to omaze.com forward slash LBTH. Donate and good luck.